composite bow technology is an extremely sophisticated form of bow making. It joins multiple materials together, taking advantage of each material's different physical properties to create a highly efficient and deadly tool. We don't know when or where the first bow was made, let alone the first composite bow. Self bows made entirely out of wood are the logical first rung on the evolutionary ladder of bow design and are undoubtedly very ancient. But there is some evidence out there that some of the first developments that ultimately led to high-performance composites might actually be much older than one might think. The earliest definitive evidence we have for archery comes from late Paleolithic Europe, in the form of bows, arrows, arrowheads, and cave art. Of course, bows might have been invented earlier, but they evidently had an age of relative obscurity followed by an age of ascendance, after which they superseded other projectile weapons. Some of the bows in Spanish cave art are obviously straight conventional longbows that would not be out of place or anachronistic in countless other centuries that followed the painting's creation. But other bows have distinctive recurved and double curve shapes that are highly evocative of sinew-backed composites found the world over. So what is the likelihood that these Stone Age bows are actually composites? Size distortion and possible artistic exaggeration makes it hard to tell the dimensions of the ancient bows, but they appear to range from the same size as the long bows all the way to rather short and highly deflexed. Now, the more you bend or curve the shape of a bow, the more stress and energy you put into the materials, and the more likely it is to break. At the same time, the design becomes much more efficient and more powerful as the total amount of stored energy increases. Making the bow shorter, as seen in the Spanish cave art, also decreases the overall mass of the limbs and thus improves arrow speed. But this also drastically increases stress and the chance of breakage. Composites avoid breaking by using extraordinarily resilient materials for the parts of the bow that are most subject to damage. Typically, increasing the tensile strength of the outer curve or back of the bow is the most important step. This is commonly accomplished by tying or gluing on animal sinew, or using two different woods for the back and the belly. However, in fairness, the recurved shape of the Stone Age bows can be accomplished with self bows made of extremely high quality timber. For example, the Lake Lidro recurve is a Bronze Age bow found in Italy that was made out of yew wood. There is no evidence that it was sinewed, and at 57 inches long, it would not have required it. Composite technology only really becomes crucial when the recurved shape is taken to an extreme or when the bow is made very, very short. One interesting note is that the front profiles typically associated with composite bows are very widespread and are widely implemented in self bows, as the advantages of their design are distinct from composite technology and very well could have been invented completely independently before being incorporated into composite designs. There is no way to know for sure if some Stone Age bows were composite in construction. But even if the bows were not composite, the mere depiction of recurved and heavily deflexed bows is interesting in that it at least shows an awareness of higher performance concepts in a culture normally associated purely with so-called primitive straight longbows. It also reinforces the notion that our ancestors were very, very smart, and that the design process that eventually resulted in composite technology started very, very early. <laughs>